In this video, we're going to talk about uh, two different topics. So the, the, one of the topics is minimum cost search. Uh, last time we talked about breadth first search and we determined that it was guaranteed to find the path to goal with the minimum number of steps, requiring the minimum number of actions. But there was no guarantee that it would find the path to the goal that had the minimum cost once we start assigning different costs to different actions. So that's the goal of minimum cost search. We're also going to talk about a uh, more efficient way of storing the partial paths during the course of our search algorithm. Uh, and this is something that, that isn't covered in our textbook, so you might want to pay attention. So let's bring up that generic searching algorithm again. And here's our figure that we've been looking at to sort of track the process of these searches. So remember that what's actually being stored on the frontier are these potentially long tuples uh, containing the, the possible paths to the goal. So we can see that happening in this figure here. Um, so right, if we consider these two values on the frontier, Right, this is just the the last node in that path. So what's actually being stored? Let's move over to our our drawable version here. What's actually being stored on the frontier is all of these nodes uh, in some collection, and we have this as another possible path. And so we've got all of these nodes stored as well. So somehow that seems redundant, right? So uh, it seems like a duplication of effort that these two paths, which are almost identical, uh, both have to save that entire that entire sequence. Um, and it is redundant, and there's a more efficient way to do it. So the observation is that we're always extending uh, from an existing path, right? So somehow when we're going to extend, say, this node here, Right. It's part of a path that's already sitting on the frontier. And when we extend it, we want to extend it, right? We want to add two new paths to, to the frontier, this one and this one. So we could create you know, two entirely new uh, paths and store the, both of those on the frontier. That's the way we've been thinking until now. But it'll be more efficient to just save a pointer back to the partial path that got us here. Uh, and that's the basic idea behind this new data type that I'm introducing. So rather than when I add a new, uh, new node to the frontier, rather than adding the entire path to that node, I just add a little data type that's going to reference back to the path that leads to that, to that point in the graph. And of course, um, if I'm doing that, this isn't what my figure will look like anymore, right? Because this wouldn't be an entire path. This would be a reference to the path that led to it. This would be a reference to the path that led to it, and so far, and so on. So what we would end up seeing would be something more like this. Where as we are building up our set of partial paths, they're stored as these sort of reverse linked lists, or in fact, they're going to be more like a reverse tree, etc. So that's the basic idea. Let's take a look at the data type that's going to let us do that. And I presented it here in sort of a UML format. So these things are going to have three fields. They're going to store some representation of the state at the end of this path. So that's the state field. They're going to maintain that backwards reference to the path node uh, that precedes it. So right, the terminology here is maybe a little bit confusing. I've just invented it. So we already have nodes. That nodes represent states in our uh, state space graph. So we'll use path nodes to describe this little data type that we'll use in implementing our search algorithm to represent our paths. So each of these path nodes will refer back to its parent path node, and we can construct an entire path by looking at that sequence of linked path nodes. And 
looking ahead a little bit, remember we're going to be interested in, in finding minimum cost paths, so it's going to be convenient to store the total path cost uh, represented that, that corresponds to the path that this path node represents. So that's going to be another field here. And just, right, you can see how we'll, how we'll calculate that. Every time a new path node is created, its total path cost uh, is going to be related to its parent's path cost. So how, how expensive was it to reach the parent plus the cost of that last step to move from the parent to this new node. Okay, so maybe taking another quick look back here, right? So let's say it was time to add uh, these two nodes uh, to, we're going to expand this element of the frontier. What would that look like? We'll draw it in green this time. So we create this new data type and it's got these three fields, right? One of the fields is this state. One of the fields is a reference back to the previous path node and one of the fields is this numerical value that represents the total cost of getting from the start of the graph to uh, that point in the graph. So this I think is maybe a little bit confusing because now we have two graphs in play and they're they're of different types, right? So we have this data structure that we're building, um, and we also have this underlying state space graph that represents the problem. So the state space graph is potentially infinite. Maybe these nodes over here are generated on the fly as we're traversing that part of the graph. But these green things, right, this is an actual data structure that we're building uh, as we go. And the, the structure of those things could be quite different, so it's possible. It's entirely possible, right, that our underlying state space graph has uh, cycles in it and backwards edges and all sorts of complicated structure. But if we're doing things right, generally our, our path node data structure is going to be this sort of reverse tree. Okay, so let's let's see what happens when we modify our our generic search algorithm or the search algorithm that we've sort of been putting together to make use of these path nodes rather than tuples for storing uh, for storing paths. So I, you can see everything that's been changed here is in blue, uh, and it's, it's, everything looks pretty similar. I've introduced another input to the algorithm, which is this cost function that we're going to need when we move on to minimum cost search, and we need it to maintain that, that path cost field in the, in the path nodes. Uh, other than that, things look pretty similar. Our friend, our this is depth first search, our modified depth first search. So our frontier is now a stack of path nodes instead of tuples. And when we push something under the frontier, we push on a single path node object, right? It represents an entire path by these backwards references. And notice that the initial uh, parent is none because there's no parent for the start node. Uh, and the cost of reaching the start node is zero. Uh, but in general, as we expand a particular node, right? We go through and we add all of the path nodes that are reachable from the end of the of the path node that was popped from the frontier. And every time we add a path node, the state associated with it is, is that S state. Right? The parent is the the state that we're we're getting to this point from, and then we pass in the cost of taking that action. Uh, so that's it, right? So this is, the algorithm here is exactly the same. The only thing that we've changed is how we're maintaining um, those paths. And I guess there's one complication here, right? It says the return value is now the path represented by that path node. So there's some sort of missing algorithm here where we reconstruct the actual path from this linked list of path nodes, which is going to involve us sort of re reversing the direction of those references, right? The, References take us backwards from the end of the path to the beginning. So we'll have to think at some point about how you turn that around and turn that into the, the forward sequence of, of actions that you need to take. So that's not very complicated. Okay, at the beginning, I promised that we were going to talk about uh, two topics. Uh, one of the topics was this more efficient way of representing paths. So that's this path node. Check. Um, and the second topic we wanted to talk about was 
minimum cost search. So the good news is that now that we have this, this new data type in place and we're tracking the costs of paths, it's a pretty small modification to allow us to modify our algorithm to find minimum cost paths. So here's the new version of the algorithm, again with the little modifications made in blue. And really the only difference is that instead of a stack or a queue for the frontier, we're going to use a priority queue. And the priority queue is going to be ordered by those path costs. So every time it's time to expand the frontier, we're going to select uh, the candidate path that has the minimum cost of all of the candidate paths on the frontier. And that's really it. That's the whole story. So uh, we're queuing this onto this priority queue here, and then we'll get that shortest, shortest uh, path candidate off when we dequeue here. Um, and this guarantees that we'll always find the shortest, co the lowest cost path to the goal. Um, why is that the case? We, this guarantees that we always search all of the short paths before any of the long paths. So it's impossible that we could get to the goal through a longer path uh, if there was a shorter path to get there, because we would have already found it on that shorter path. There's one little uh, mistake in this in this algorithm uh, as it stands. So the astute reader may have caught it already. Um, and it's that we actually have to be a little bit careful about um, making sure that when any any node on the frontier actually represents the the minimum cost way of getting to that node. So something can end up on the frontier without actually being the shortest path to that to that node. It's probably worth doing just a really simple example here. So the simplest example would be something like this, maybe. We've got a graph with three nodes in it. This is our start state, and it goes from here to here, and there's an edge from here to here. And maybe our path, our arc costs are something like this. So if this is our start state, right, this is put on the, this is initially put on the frontier. Um, it's removed from the frontier. And both of its neighbors are added to the frontier. And we'll store the cost associated with each of those neighbors. So five and one. So everything's looking okay so far, and the first element that I would take off of the frontier would be this node, because it's got the lowest path cost. Uh, it's not the goal state. We'll assume that this is the goal state. So now, when I want to add its neighbors to the frontier, I see that this guy's already on the frontier, so I wouldn't add it, right? This, this check would fail, um, and this node here would not end up on the frontier, so that would be just a failed sort of step in the search, then this guy would get pulled off the frontier, I would find the goal, and I would, I would believe that it took me uh, a cost of five to get to the goal. So obviously that's not what we want, so every time we're deciding whether or not a particular uh, node should be added to the frontier, a particular path should be added to the frontier, in this minimum cost search, we'll need to, um, right, if it's already on the frontier, we'll need to make sure that we haven't just found a shorter way of getting there, and in this case we would have, so that 5 would become a 2. And then when that value came off the frontier, we would now have found the minimum path, and it would be this path. So maybe it will be clearer if we just work through one more slightly more complicated example from the beginning. We'll, we'll draw a similar graph, so we'll see some of those same issues come up again but we'll add one more node to make things a little bit more interesting. And we'll assume that um, this is the start state, this is the goal state, and we've got some path costs here, 5, 1, 1, 1, 4, something like that. So you and I can look at this, at this and we can immediately see that the minimum cost path is going to look like this, but it's obviously not the minimum length path, right? The minimum length path would be either this or this. Those each require two steps. 
So let's just step through the algorithm as it stands and see what happens. Um, we'll use green today to represent the frontier. So this node is initially added to the frontier and its path cost is zero. Um, it will then be removed from the frontier. We'll use uh, blue to represent explored nodes. And it will add both of its neighbors to the frontier. So enqueue them onto the priority queue and the, the keys there will be right, five, that's the path cost from here to here and one, that's the path cost from here to here. So this is the same process we went through a minute ago. Um, at this point, one will be expanded. So two values on the frontier change, right? This one was already on the frontier, but it's it's modified, right? This, this node, right, this node linked back like this. So that's gonna go and we're gonna add a new node linking back like this. And the value associated with that new node is no longer five, it's going to be two. And we're also going to add this guy to the frontier and his, his um, the path costs that will be associated with that node are going to be, it's going to be four because that's the cost of this step plus one because that was the partial path cost that we had stored there, so that's five. And this guy isn't on the frontier anymore so we'll mark him in blue. So that's how things stand. Um, now the next value that's going to be uh, explored on the frontier is two because it's the it's got the smallest path cost. So he'll end up in the explored set. Um, now he we can add his neighbors to the frontier. There's only one reachable neighbor here. It's already in the frontier, but we recognize now that the the path cost should be uh, three, it shouldn't be five. So, you know, whereas a second ago, this was a path node leading back this way, we're going to modify it to be a path node leading back this way, and the value of that new path node is going to be three. And at this point, uh, this is the only node, the only path left on the frontier, so that's, that's dequeued. And uh, we recognize that we've reached the goal, and the goal is uh, the, the total pass, path cost associated with that route is three. And this was a path node that referred back here. This was a path node that referred back here. And this was a path node that referred back here. So now we can reconstruct our path to the goal by reversing these links and stepping through that way. So that's minimum cost search. Um, what's coming up next? Well. We can talk about finding the optimal path, um, and then we can talk about finding the optimal path efficiently. So we can talk about making that algorithm run fast, and, and that's going to be A star. So that's what we'll talk about next time.